Okay, it's uh, flipping hot today, and uh, as such, I'm kind of hiding in the shade of my garage. And I thought I'd make a quick video, a bit of an impromptu one, talking about seats for the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. In particular, I want to focus in on this one. This is uh, the latest seat that I've got for the bike. It's a touring seat from a company called Trip Machine. So we'll jump in and we'll compare it to some of the offerings from Royal Enfield, and I'll let you know how I've been getting on with it. So let's do it. So when any new motorbike comes out, there's always this kind of fiery debate about seats because people take them very personally. It's a very big part of the comfort factor and usability of a motorbike. There's always this uh, conversation about whether or not you should upgrade your seat, whether or not the factory seat is any good. In the case of the Interceptor 650, it's no different. Some people absolutely love this thing. I think it's brilliant. This is the stock seat. As you can see here, it is a fairly budget affair it's not leather it's made of this kind of stamped vinyl it's got that kind of classic brit style to it kind of flat bench style a little kick up at the back but i think they've done it really well you know it, it's done to a certain price point and it serves its purpose okay for the first few miles of riding on this i reckon you can do like you know a good half hour hour long ride on this no problems at all it feels quite plush quite comfortable you know, it's an okay seat. The issue that a lot of people have with it is longer trips. When you start putting on bigger miles, the fact that this is very soft quickly equates to a feeling of lack of support. It's quite squidgy underneath you. It kind of gives way a little bit and doesn't offer a huge amount of support. So that means you're putting more kind of stress on your own muscles, your own core to give you that support. And over time, that's a little bit fatiguing. I guess the other thing with this seat, and the reason a lot of people might want to upgrade is, you know, the aesthetic of it. It looks nice, but it's a little bit like, you know, that kind of vinyl oak flooring you get for your kitchen where it's kind of stamped, <laughs> stamped plastic made to look like wood. You've got a little bit of that vibe going on with this, the fact that it is vinyl, the fact that it's not even stitched, it's just a kind of stamped pattern. Yeah, some people might want to upgrade that from an aesthetic standpoint. So after a few months of riding around perfectly happy on this, I did decide to upgrade to this one. This is the uh, GT style touring seats. So you can get it in both styles. This is the kind of Interceptor style, but this is the GT style. And all they've done on this seat, I've made a couple of videos about this already. All they've done here is they've kind of reinforced it with what they call a 3D mesh, which just gives it more structure. It feels a lot firmer and in fact when you first get on this seat it is i'd say less comfortable than this one because it's harder but after time after a few miles you start to appreciate that support and uh for about 120 quid it's incredibly good value it looks nice as well i mean you've got a little bit less of that kind of fake stitching going on it's more of a kind of stamped tuck and roll ish type pattern here on the front a kind of flat style on the back for the pillion and it's got some nice kind of white stitching around there it's all right it's a pretty good seat so if you really want to step up you might look at something like this now this is the touring seat from a company called trip machine they are an indian company they specialize in more general kind of leather leather goods for most bikes they do a lot of leather luggage and stuff like that the thing that drew me to this with trip machine is it's one of the only bike specific parts that they make for the interceptor in fact i think it is the only bike specific part and what they've done is they've actually completely recreated the chassis so this is actually made of glass fiber so they've gone ahead and made their own version which fits perfectly onto the interceptor there's absolutely no problems installing it and then they've upholstered it with suede uh, it's, there's a black suede that you can get and there's well, see i've got it <laughs> there's a brown tobacco color as well and you can see here they've kind of stapled it in as you would expect uh, but underneath the suede is, I think, like three different layers of foam. They've got a high density foam and a slightly softer one and then an even slightly softer one still on the top. So when you first kind of push this seat down, it feels a little bit soft. But actually, when you sit on it and compress it, you, you get that feeling of a lot of support. Now, for a lot of people that get on the seat like this and think it's too hard, it's, it's got a really firm feel to it. And the fact that they've used suede to put it together as well definitely gives it quite a lot of structure. Now, whether that's gonna break in over time and get a little bit softer, I don't really know. I didn't buy this seat new. I bought it secondhand on eBay for about 90 pounds. If you wanna get a brand new one, the RRP is around 250 pounds. So it's a 
pretty significant investment if you want to grab this seat. But I will say that I think Trip Machine have done a good job in terms of not just re-upholstering a, a stock chassis, they've built their own, it fits perfectly. And I think it has a really nice look to it. So we're going to kind of split this chat into two camps really. First is the kind of the style and, and then I guess the substance bit, because in our world of choosing aftermarket parts for motorbikes, we're always kind of dealing with that Venn diagram, I guess, of getting things that look good, but also making sure things have got a, a practicality to them. So in terms of the look and feel of it, it I mean, it, it's beautiful. It looks far more premium than either the stock seat or the touring seat from Royal Enfield, 100%, you know, fairly confident in saying this is a good looking seat. They've used that classic kind of tuck and roll style. Everything's hand stitched, so real stitching, real suede, looks really nice. It's definitely a little bit flatter, I think, than the, uh, the stock seat. I mean, apart from this bit here where they've kind of carved it out, it's got a nice taper to it. The materials look really nice. You know, it is a, a quality thing and you'd expect it to be so for 250 quid, right? From an aesthetic standpoint, it really suits the bike. It's definitely a talking point in the machine. It gives it a bit of a kind of more custom look. You've got these little leather panels here. On this side, it says handmade. On the other side, it's got the brand Trip Machine and you've got this little passenger grab strap as well. I'm not sure if this is in the, in the best place for me actually because I find I just sit on this, which is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, maybe it could have been a little bit further back. Or maybe that's just the weird way that I ride. Now, looks are subjective. I think it looks really nice. From a practicality standpoint, start with comfort. That's a little bit of a subjective one, but I find this seat really comfortable. It's, I think, the most comfortable seat out of all the seats I've tried on the Interceptor. This one's a close second, the, the touring seat from Royal Enfield. This one's the hardest. So for longer trips, it's going to give you the most support. Uh, it might not feel the most instantly comfortable, but it's definitely got that structure to, uh, to give you comfort over time. The other fact that it's made out of suede is great because it gives you a lot of grip. Now, if you're riding in kind of leather jeans on, on this vinyl stuff, I find that you slip around quite, quite a bit. It's not, it's not the end of the world, but you do a little bit slippy. This thing, you stick to it like Velcro. It's amazing. Um, it's probably the reason why they use suede on a lot of dirt bikes and things like that. It's got an amazing amount of grip and um, that actually does change how you ride the bike a little bit. You feel like you've got a little bit more uh, control over the bike. Um, just gives you a little bit more confidence. It's really nice. The problem though is the fact that this is made out of suede. And uh, as I said, I didn't buy this thing brand new. I got it secondhand on eBay. When it turned up, it was in a little bit of a mess. And I spent quite a long time having to kind of bring the nap back up. They call this kind of grain in the suede, the nap. And it was a little bit flat, a little bit dirty in places and just kind of needed sorting out. And it, it took probably about an hour of just brushing it. In fact, in here, I've got a whole load of different types of brushes and things that I've been using for this. So you've got, let's get this open a little bit. You've got kind of rubber brushes like that. These are good because they've got quite a lot of grip to them. So you just kind of go over it like that. Quickly kind of bring it up. And then there's um, all sorts in here. This is a horsehair brush as well. So again, just finishing it off, just kind of brush out any dirt or particles or whatever. So I had to go through the whole process of cleaning it and, and getting it uh, looking as good as it possibly could. And then went over the whole thing with some of this stuff. This is uh, Nick Wax. And the idea of this is that it, it kind of waterproofs and seals the suede a little bit. But the big problem with suede is you can't 100% seal it. You can't 100% waterproof it. It's always gonna be a little bit porous and almost regardless of how much wax you put on it, it will let water in. So my kind of issue with this seat is the fact that it's, it's just not gonna be very good in the wet. Fact, once this thing gets wet, it's gonna be the devil's own job to get it dry again. Now, I think Trip Machines say that underneath this suede, there's a kind of waterproof membrane. So if water does soak in, it's just the suede, the top layer that's gonna get wet. Uh, it shouldn't soak in and become a, one big giant sponge. But still, as anyone who you know kind of wears leather or you know has a suede pair of shoes, you'll know that water can be pretty treacherous for this stuff. So I've sealed it as best as I can. In fact, let's have a. 
I'll show you. Let's have a little look here. A little bit of water on here. You see, it kind of beads up a little bit and runs off. But there's a huge amount that's just gone straight into the seat there. I don't know if you can see that. I did this a couple of times out on the road. I've got some B-roll of me doing this as well. But yeah, I mean, that's now wet. <laughs> so suede is just inherently not very water repellent. And that might be something you should think about if you're thinking about getting a seat like this for, for touring. Just by means of comparison, you know what's going to happen here. If I chuck a bit of water over this, you can throw water over this all day long. That ain't going nowhere. There's no chance of that ever soaking in. And that, I think, probably makes this seat a better seat for, for touring because you're not sacrificing a huge amount in terms of comfort, but you have got that weatherproofing, which honestly could make all the difference between having a horrible ride home and being you know, relatively comfortable, because there is nothing worse. We all know there is absolutely nothing worse than uh, sitting on a wet seat or any, anything wet. <laughs> so um, that's the risk that you're running with this bad boy from Trip Machine. So really you have to decide, you know, from a aesthetic standpoint, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. There's no denying this is a really, really pretty seat and putting it on the bike, standing back and looking at it, it's, it's the one, it's absolutely beautiful. But would I take this out on the road and tour with it? I'd be pretty hesitant to do that, to be completely honest. Yes, you can get a seat for it, a seat cover for it. You can slap over a kind of polythene style seat. I think Trip Machine even made one, I've done a collaboration with Urban Rider. And there's a little thing, it costs like 20 quid. It comes in a little canvas bag. You stick it on the side of your bike and you can just whack it over. That could be the solution. Um, but again, it's just another thing you have to remember and faff about with and all that kind of stuff. So really, I guess the, the two things are weatherproofing, not great. Maintenance level on a seat like this is significantly higher than basically for zero maintenance on something like this. So if you're prepared to put the time in to keep it looking good, if you're okay with the fact it might get wet and you might have to bring a cover out with you, might be a good idea, but I just don't think it ticks, for me, I just don't think it ticks that box of being both stylish and practical. It's not a very practical seat, but it is incredibly stylish. So on the Venn diagram of style and substance, I think it's definitely in the style camp. It's comfortable, but I think it's gonna be a pain in the neck. So for me, this is a good second seat. This is my kind of, I know it's gonna be dry, take it out for one day, good weather forecast. I think it'd be absolutely brilliant. This would be the seat that I take out when I'm touring. And I've got a little plan for this seat as well because I recently got in touch with a company that specializes in reupholstering. I can't remember what they're called now. Nostalgia? Nostalgia Customs or something like that. So what they do is they take the stock plastic chassis, they rip all of this off, take all the foam out and everything, and they will build up a completely new top side of the seat uh, for about 170 pounds and what I've asked them to to use is a now I forget the actual name of this but it's an Alcantara I'll put the name up on screen but it's effectively a marine grade waterproof suede effect material so it looks like suede it's going to look like this but it's going to be completely synthetic it's effectively a, well, I don't know, I don't know what, what it actually is, but it's, it's completely waterproof. So it should give me the practicality of the vinyl with the look of the suede. And what I'm going to go for is a kind of a suede effect top like this. So it's going to have that kind of tuck and roll suede, and then it's going to have leather, big leather trim around the outside. And they're going to do like a, an embroidered Royal Enfield logo in the back, which would be um, the old style Royal Enfield logo. And a, a passenger strap on it as well so for 170 quid you can just get your old stocker have it ripped apart get rid of all this stuff on top and like completely rebuild it uh, with an upholsterer so rather than spending 250 pounds on something like this you could do that 
So that's what I'm going to do with the stock chassis. There's no chance of me putting this back on the bike and riding with it. So I'm happy to kind of butcher that and take it apart. That will be on the channel soon when I get that done. It's going to take a few weeks. But for now, I'm switching between these two, the, uh, the GT Tourer and this pretty one. Um, I think I've got a good little selection there, but can I build the best of both worlds? We'll find out. So I hope that's been helpful. If you're thinking about investing £250 in the trip machine seat, I only spent 90 quid on it. And for me, I'm feeling very pleased with my little investment. I wouldn't use it as a touring seat. Some people might completely disagree, might think it's perfect as a touring seat. No problems with potentially getting it wet. I'll just slap the cover over it. It will be fine. I wouldn't want to risk that because I don't like sitting on wet things. Um, from a maintenance standpoint, look, not a big deal to have to give it the old brush here and there. It took me a little bit of time just to get on top of it. But I think once you're, um, once you're in front of it, it's just a case of giving it a bit of a, a, bit of a brush down every now and again. I mean, it's not going to get, I mean, it depends what you do. If you take, a, take your bike off road and stuff like that, getting mud and stuff all over this, it will be a bit of a nightmare. But it's just another thing to have to look after. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. Anyway, I've probably talked for as long as one can possibly talk about a seat. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, until the next one, ride safe.